Factuals. I am your co-host. They call me Josh Moody. It's the handsome one, the dancing one, the prancing one. The... <laughs> it's shame someone. You got to say it twice. It's always better when you say it twice. What's up, everybody? I'm your other co-host, Evan sure. Odeshier. Uh, we got a special guest for y'all. We got a great show. So we're going to go ahead and let him introduce himself. My name is Vidal Hazleton, Staten Island Zone. Yeah. Play football, CFL, NFL, all that good stuff. So I'm glad to be here. So for those of y'all who don't know, Vidal had that crazy one-handed catch at uh, University of Southern California. Guys, you all seen it. I, I promise you, type it in. Vidal Hazleton. If you need to add the one-hand catch to it, I doubt you need <laughs> to add that part into it. But I guarantee it's going to be the first video that pop up. It gets very bad, guys. <laughs> And it involves one hand. So, <laughs> this was way before Odell was doing it. I'm just That's saying. That's a fact, though. That I'm is definitely saying. a fact. I'm just saying. But look, guys. First of all, Vidal, thank you for coming on the show, bro. This is love. He took his time out his busy schedule. My man is going to mini camp tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, Vegas, yep. In Vegas. So, my man took the time out to be here today. We appreciate you, bro. Absolutely. So, we're going to jump right into it. You are a top 150 ESPN recruit coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. Um, originally at Moore Catholic, and then you transferred to Hargrave Military Academy, correct? Yep. So, so talk a little about that. How was that experience for you? Um, it was a, it was a good experience, you know. Uh, just coming up from Park Hill here in Staten Island, you know, like I always been playing football. Never really, well, I always knew I wanted to go to the NFL. That was always like a dream, but you never really know how to get there. So, for me, I just kind of worked hard. It's a long story. My dad kind of put a bunch of highlight tapes together for me, kind of sent them out to every university, and. Um, once I got all these scholarships coming in, I had to realize that I needed my grades to be right. And mm. while I was in Moore, my grades wasn't up to par. My, my GPA was really low. So instead of waiting until after high school to go to the JUCO route and stuff like that, I just decided to forfeit my senior year and just get, and start the process early. Now, um, two questions that I have. Um, one is what made you choose USC? And what do you feel like, how do you feel you really benefited from Har um, Harvard Military Academy? Because like, I know you said your grades weren't as well. So. Well, yeah, I benefited from Hargrave because, like, it was a postgraduate program. So a lot of the, the guys that was on the team, they was all older than me. They was, they waited until after high school to go. So I was the youngest dude there. I kind of got a chance to see what it felt like to be away from home because it's a board, it's a military school in, in Virginia. So I got a chance to see, like, how I would react to just being away from my family. And, and, and that kind of determined where I where I would decide to go to school at. One time, once I was at Hargrave, and I, it became numb to me, and I was able to, to go to school anywhere, so. Okay. And what, I forgot the other question. Um, uh, what made you choose USC? Oh, I chose USC, man, just because of the weather and all, all the good things, you know, Reggie Bush, the history. <laughs> but I was originally committed to the University of Miami, and then I was committed for a long time, and then they um, all the coaches and stuff got fired right before signing day, so. I got nervous, and I just knew I wanted to play big-time football, you know? Like, I had all these offers. I was I didn't know disrespect to none of the, the schools out there, but I didn't want to play small-time football. I wanted mm -hmm. to go somewhere big and, and make a name for myself. USC, the Coliseum, that's definitely prime I mean, that's time. The dream. <laughs> that's, hey, guys, if you play football from, from a youngin, and, and that's all you knew your whole life, that is always the dream to play big-time football. So you don't have to apologize for that, bro. That's what we all want, and mm -hmm. I know that for a fact. So I want to know... And ask you, you played with some studs. You was a stud in college. Just to name a few, Ray Maluga, Mark Sanchez, Dwayne Jarrett, Steve Smith, Ryan Khalil, mm -hmm. Brian Cushing, Clay Matthews, Taylor Mays. And you was one of those guys. So I got to ask you, you know, and these are for the youngest out here who was watching this. Talk about the effort and the time you put into to, to getting in there, bro. Oh, it's... it's the, the stuff that people don't see. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot, man. It's a, a, Everybody just see the helmet when you, when you, you the scholarship, the headlines, but... The things you gotta do every off season um, is never really no off season. You always gotta be staying in shape. There's gonna be days where you know some of your boys don't really want to work out. They don't work out for the same reasons you do, and you gotta go get that go get that workout stuff done. So it's definitely a lot of work, man. It's to to tell you the amount of work that goes into being a professional athlete is just we'll be here all day. But uh, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of sprints, a lot of grinding, uh, a lot of pain and. And it, that's what makes it worth it. The, the season is the easy part when you're out there catching and you're making all those touchdowns and stuff. That's the easy part because you got thousands of people watching you and it's fun at that point. But the, the hardest part of being a pro athlete is just, you know, in the off season when you got to do the stuff where nobody's paying attention. And the stuff that nobody wants to do. Yep. That's very and, true. And I, you said, and I, this, this key word stuck out to me. You said pain. 
Um, Cause I can relate to some of the pain you experienced in terms of you had an ACL injury. Can, mm-hmm. you, can you talk a little bit about that and what it was like like to overcome and, and how you was able to bounce back from that? Yeah, well, when I transferred from USC, uh, I transferred to the University of Cincinnati and they made me sit out a year. So I sat out that whole season and then I ended up, uh, I, it was I was eligible to play that following year. So I did all of that time on, on practice squads, just uh, you know helping the team get better and just doing my time sitting out. Uh, ended up playing in that first game of the season when I was eligible, and then I caught a kick return in the second half, and I tore my ACL. So that kind of like hindered me because after that was my last year in college, so that was the year where I was going to be entering my, my entering the NFL draft. So it kind of put a it kind of put a stop sign on, on on a lot of things as far as me getting drafted and in, in, in the places where I was really supposed to go. And I ended up having to take the bottom route, which was the undrafted free agent route, and and that's just a whole another story. But tearing my ACL, yeah, man, it just, it was, it, I cried, you know, it was, it's, oh. a, it's a, it's a tough thing, you well, know what I'm saying? Especially, well, I don't wish that on my worst enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially just from, uh, you know, all the, all the, the history you hear, people t- blowing their knees out back in the days, but. You know, like just the technology nowadays. Right. I, I came back just from seeing Adrian Peterson and and just the way some people bounce back from it. I had the mentality where I was just like, man, if whatever they told me to do, I was whatever the doctors were saying. If they said I was on crutches for six weeks, I was trying to prove the doctor that I could get off in three weeks. You know, so I kind of did that, and I, I actually did something special for myself. And I I got hurt that first game of that season, and I was eligible to play in that very last game of that college season. The only reason why I didn't play was. We wasn't going to a bowl game and stuff like that, but it's just like milestones, you know, just like the things in my life, just coming from Staten Island, you know, like people always, they always got protocol about certain things. So I just like to break the protocol. You respect. can definitely respect that. Yeah. Respect. Now, <clears throat> you touched a little bit about um, the undrafted free agent route. We know, mm-hmm. um, we know that um, currently you play in the CFL, but you played in the FXFL as well, right? Yep, you did one yep. season in there. Mm-hmm. So how was that like, you know, being, um, like Josh said, a top 150 recruit, playing at USC, going to Cincinnati, and then kind of having to take the bottom route. Yeah. I mean, well, that's a long road. I mean, that's just the path of when you when you, when you you fight in the dream to make it to the NFL. Like, And even before that, I played with the Bengals, a few teams. But a lot of people, they see that, you know, just because you got on the NFL helmet, they think you made it, you got all these millions of dollars. But I actually, probably the most money that I made the whole time when I was in the NFL was probably no more than like $15,000. So it was like... It seems like a lot to people. I mean, not with fifteen thousand dollars is it is a lot of money <laughs> to some people, but to compare to the way you know you come home and people treat you, they just like you know they don't really know the business side of the game. They look at you as just like, oh yeah, he made it and they happy for you. But you know what I'm saying? It's it's tough going down that road because once you undrafted, you don't really have the same opportunity as a guy who who is drafted on the team. Well, so when, money, when you get there, money in the room. exactly so. When you get there, you know, like you 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 already with the fourth string and the, and the third string, and you probably get like two reps throughout that whole day, and it's like <laughs> them two reps that yeah. come your way, you gotta make them count. Oh, so you gotta no. be perfect, it's, and and it's impossible to be yeah. perfect as a football player. So it you it just tells you the level of stress that it puts on like undrafted guys coming up. So it's a long road, man. And then when I got released from the NFL with my ACL, it was the the phone calls were slowing down for me. So. I was just trying to join any league that the NFL would watch mm-hmm. to just to try to get them to show them like, look, I'm healthy again. And and that's just the, the name of the business, man. A lot of guys are just joining a lot of different passing leagues, a lot of things nowadays, Johnny Manziel, a lot of people are doing yeah. things to get back in the NFL. And they do that just for the hunger of the game because they know the NFL scout, somebody may be there to watch them and maybe they could get their chance again. It's all about getting that film again. Is, exactly. Yeah, so, so so I feel like we've been, we've been talking about, you know, some downs, some lows. Yeah. Let's let's talk about some some positives because mm-hmm. you've been dogging in the CFL mm-hmm. from what I from what I see, and your stats is crazy. So I want to I, I want to I wanna talk about that. What's what's that been like? How's the game? Is the game that much different than American football? Um, it's a little bit different, but it's it's really not. At the end of the day, it's still um, DB versus receiver. Right. It's still it's still tackling. Man, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But uh, the CFL man, like the CFL was really it helped me out a lot. It rejuvenated me a lot because. At, the, at that point, I was just hungry. You know, I was going through the, the, the process of trying to get back in the NFL, and then I waited a whole year, and I didn't get no phone calls. And I'm like, man, I got to feed the family. Something got to go. So usually guys take a while before they make a decision to go to the CFL, just like I did. And then when I made the decision to go, I kind of went there. Not really on – yeah, I needed money, but I really went there just because I tore my ACL twice. So for me, I was like – 
I, I can't, I don't want to be one of those stories where like, you know, I was the top recruit, I went to this level and, and I kind of just stopped because of a knee injury. So for me, it was like, I had to, I really just wanted to go to the CFL just to get that, that those memories of, of playing football again, you know, just from those high school days with your boys and stuff. You just wanted to be in the locker room. I just wanted to catch a touchdown again. So like the CFL was more for me than just money. It was, it rejuvenated me. It's just, you know, just to kept, just to, even if even if that's where I ended my story, it was like at least I had an ending and rather than a sad ending, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the uh, biggest adjustment um, coming from America and then going to Canada? And it doesn't have to be football related. Just in general, what was the biggest adjustment? Um, the, just just the you know going to a different country. A lot of people that scares a lot of people. So for me, it was um, it, like I said, like once I went to Hargrave, it started way back from Hargrave. Once I knew I could be away from home, I knew that whatever, with, with any opportunity, even if it was in Brazil, anywhere, I'm the type of person where I don't really think about where it's at. It's just like, all right, how long I gotta be over there? I get the job done and I'll be back home, you know? Like, ain't, to me, I never was the type of person to just worry about what was going on at home, you know? I, I chasing my dream no matter what, and then everything else is secondary after that. So, so what's, so how, how's the, is it lit out there, bro? Like, wait, what's, how's the, do they play American? Like, who do you? I mean, I know Drake is probably running in there crazy. I'm not saying, but I'm just trying to say, like, what's it like? I know it's a little different up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it's different up there. So, so talk a little about that. What's, what is it like? Yeah, man. Uh, Canada is, is is dope, man. Is 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 a really cool country. I always try to get my boys to come out there. They be looking at me like I'm crazy, but I'm like, man, if you come to Canada, they, they show you so much love up there. But uh, it's just the culture, the way they talk, you know, the way they eat. Their, their food is, they got health laws out there, so it's no okay. really no processed food out oh, there and stuff. So, yeah, so it's just the way they culture is, the way they're so nice out there, they're clean. You know, I, I lost my wallet one time for a week, and I was tracking it with um with my mobile app, and I'm like, man, nobody's touching my car. Next thing you know, it ended up at my facility. People return things like that. So it's just like Crazy. the wow. beauty of the country, man. I, I love everything about Canada, the people. Uh, it's an experience, man, and if anybody ever gets a chance, I think you should go for sure. So could you see yourself living in Canada after you finish playing? I could, I could see my like, I see myself living a lot of places. So <laughs> I could see myself having a condo or something in, in so. Toronto, maybe, and then you know just traveling out there, Airbnb or something, and then come out there like you know mm -hmm. when it's time to have fun. But other than that, yeah, I could definitely see myself living in Toronto out of all the places because it's a lot of. It reminds me of New York a lot. It's a lot of culture different Trinidadians, Jamaicans, you can still get your good jerk chicken, your yeah, curry okay. chicken, yeah, you yeah, can get yeah. all that good stuff out there and you don't feel like you in a foreign country, you right, know, right. so it's pretty cool, man. So I, I want to transition, a little different topic. I want to talk NBA, NBA playoffs just started. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I don't know too much about, you know, who, who's, your, who's your team. So I'm going to ask you that. Who, favorite player, favorite team, maybe just a bunch of different players. Yeah. Who you jacking right now? I'm, I'm a Laker fan. Okay. I know a lot of people oh, might not like that, but I'm definitely oh. a Laker fan. We'll be in the playoffs next year, but... Are you uh, jacking Lonzo real quick for Evan? I'm jacking everybody that's on the Lakers, man. Okay. If you guys, if you Angel, wearing that purple, because he's trash according to Evan. I don't, I don't know if you know that. I don't know. I don't know what Evan's talking about. <laughs> I don't know where he came. I don't know what his deal is either. I don't know what his deal is either. I don't See, know. I don't forget that. You know I mean? don't want you to forget that. See, I don't forget that. Person, we, me and you know Josh, we had a big debate about this. I personally, think it really wasn't that big of a debate, guys. I actually know. <laughs> Let's keep it a stack. That's Washington. false, and I don't understand why he's lying on camera. But <laughs> I think Kuzma's gonna be the best out of that trio. Yeah, Kuzma, Kuzma. Kuzma's dope, man. They always it's a lot of young talent, man. That's what excites me. So what about for me, Randall, bro, he's tough. Randall, he got a lot better. You know, his his first two years, he kind of started slow. This yeah. year, he start, he's starting Turned to take up. off yeah, and yeah, turning yeah, yeah. into himself. So sure, yeah, man. so to me, man, we just need like we just missing like a, a veteran presence or somebody. Who do you think, who do you think they gonna get? I was just about to ask you. Speaking of a veteran, bro, I don't Jones know. LeBron. I mean, I know everybody wants LeBron, but see me, I I I'm not. I love LeBron. Don't get me wrong. He's great. He's a uh, the, the, he's a, the, a goat for sure, but you know what I'm saying. I'm looking for somebody else, honestly. Looking for somebody else, maybe like, like Paul they, George. They, I like they talk Paul about George. Kawhi, that's that's, that's the, like the hot rumor right now. They talk mm -hmm. about Kawhi, but the Spurs are still saying they're not going to uh, trade. But uh, uh, sad news of uh, Aaron Popovich. That is just so sad, bro. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. My man, you know what I'm saying? Like, just condolences to his family and all that good for stuff. Sure. That's that's a major loss anytime somebody mm -hmm. loses somebody. Now, I want to ask you something. I know you, you're, you're a Laker fan, so your answer is probably going to be biased, but Kobe, Jordan, LeBron. Top oh, one, man. two, three. How, how I'm going racing? Jordan, I'm going Kobe, and then I'm going LeBron. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the reason, let me let me explain. Please, my, and please. the reason why I feel that way is just because Jordan, 
Kobe got his whole game from Jordan to me. Like, if you just watch the way Kobe plays, seems like he all his moves is just mimic off Jordan. Jordan is Jordan, you number one. LeBron is in last place to me because LeBron is great. He does everything great, passing, scoring. But to me, like, he developed that killer instinct that Kobe and, and, and Jordan already possessed coming into the league. That killer instinct meaning when it comes down to the end of the game type of deals, I'm taking the ball, I'm not passing it to nobody. If I lose the game, it's on me, that type of, and certain people that I see in the league that got that now, like Russell Westbrook, Kyrie Kelly. Irving, Kelly. it's just a certain instinct about them in certain moments where it's mm -hmm. like, you can't, you can't, it's no work, you, it's no working in the gym for that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's just God blessed and you gotta have that will to do things like that, so. And he has it now, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like he took so much lash. Well, yeah, people was like, yo, why? Though. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, deny yeah, you yeah. there, but he definitely did. All of a sudden, he yeah. was like, I have to take the shot. Exactly. Keep exactly. That's right. That's a fact, bro. So, he, you know what I'm saying? And my, my bad. No, no, go ahead. And I just, I just feel like, you know, he developed that over just tough skin and people giving him lash on, on social media. What? Uh, whereas Kobe and Jordan. That they they do that, you know what I'm saying? Like they don't care, like you know what I'm saying? Like they lose the game, they don't care what the media is saying, they don't care about none of that. At the end of the day, the game was on them. So that's why I put LeBron in that position because I feel like when it comes down to it, that's the type of player that I want. Somebody who wants the ball at the end of the game and is gonna take over, especially if you're my superstar player. But if we talking basketball, and I we talk if we talking basketball, like strictly basketball, mm -hmm. who's the best player out of there? LeBron, to me, yeah, okay. for sure. And like, that's he's, a, he's a better passer. He's a better. He's a better facilitator. So this, this is, and this, and this is the conversation. Are we saying who was the greatest score? I mean, MJ was, because he won Defensive Player of the Years as well. Yeah. So MJ was well, well around. I just, to me, it's like, first of all, LeBron is more of the person I witnessed. I was more conscious. You know what I'm trying to say when yeah. I saw. I seen MJ. How is MJ? Yeah, the goat. But I just think, in my eyes, I still think he. he you could consider him the goat right now. But I still think he will surpass Jordan just because yeah. statistically he'll be top five or top three damn near in every category. Bro. And I was honestly just going to say, like, he's unheard in year 15. Of. And I mm -hmm. honestly think, like, in year 15, like, if they redrafted, he would still be, like, the number, number one overall pick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. And I don't feel like that with, with Jordan and Kobe towards the end of their career. They mm -hmm. kind of slowed down. Sure. But, you know, Josh and I are speaking about this. Um, supposedly, LeBron spends $1.5 on his body every year just on, like, recovery and everything like that. And, I mean, like I said, year 15, that's crazy. Like, he played every yeah. game this season. You know what I'm saying? He's putting up crazy numbers. So. See, the way I look at it, I, mean, I, I always, because I had this argument all the time. I just say, to me, I think LeBron James is the greatest player of all time okay. until it's one minute left in the game. So that's the only, that's where I come from. So you got however many, however, however, Every minutes is in a game. Fight, He's the greatest oh. until it comes down to that one minute. Because even if you look at the championships he got, like Kyrie took over in the moments when it came down to those that last minute. Mm. So to me, I mean, like he is the greatest player of all time Crazy. until Crazy. the very Crazy. last minute of the game. Crazy. And at that and and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Nah, no, it's just, so it's at, just, when when it comes down to a minute, LeBron just passed the ball right. to Kyrie He's and right. just just chilling the wing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that in, that's so to me. The, and and you can't say Kobe and LeBron is the greatest because they can't do the, some of the things LeBron James do. So to me, if you and we haven't seen the greatest yet, then because the greatest possesses all of those all things, of those skills. all of those skills, That's and then he has players. that then he has that skill at the very last minute of the game. So none of them are the greatest yet, if you ask me. Then, but my personal, I love Kobe and Jordan. And I love LeBron. I, I love his body of work and what he does. But I just got, you know, you need that last minute. To me, that's important. Because that's like me in football, man. Like the last, and it's four or five seconds left in the game, and they trying to figure out a play. I'm like, coach, throw it up. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to throw it up. And you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and those are the players to me that's like, all right, yeah, like he, that, all right, he, he that's it. He right, got right, it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so and everybody, everybody, don't got it. Dog, everybody don't have it. That exactly. Dog, bro. That's a, exactly. That's a fact, man. We're kind of going to uh, switch gears a little bit. Um, we're going to jump into fashion. So, you're traveling. You're about to hit the road. What sneakers are you packing? Uh, I'm packing. Uh, I got a, I, I'm got. i into the Yeezys right now because they're real comfortable. I'm, I'm into real, I'm into comfort. I got thousands of, not thousands. I'm Damn, exaggerating. I'm thousands. <clears throat> but I got hundreds. I got hundreds from when I was collecting from, from high school, even when I was at more Catholic, when I didn't even have to wear some of them. I got shoes that I wore maybe like once or twice. But I got about a good three, four, 
I got a good amount upstairs. It looked like a baby footlock upstairs. So <laughs> for me, a lot of the shoes that I got, I don't really wear them no more, but just because it, they they not com they not comfortable. So, but I still have the love for certain shoes. But right now I'm into comfort. So when I'm traveling, I love my Prestos, my Yeezys, those those different shoes. But I'm definitely my my I'm definitely packing a few pairs of Jordans. You know, I got a, um I like the uh the nines the um the olive nines. Okay. Definitely those are getting packed. Uh, maybe the, the bread, the Levens is getting packed. Classics. Uh, no I love ones? the yeah. Um, I got a pair of ones. Mm -hmm. I got I got some ones. I like the I like the retro the um the red and black ones. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. Bread. I like those. Um, I like the uh, you got the um the Concords. Those are classics. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, those are just some that's definitely those are even if I don't wear them on my trip, I always just gotta have. I gotta those. have them. I'm not the type. That, I'm not the type to travel with like just two pairs of shoes. I travel mm -hmm. with like twenty seven. Yeah, like yeah. You only I'm, two I'm always paying that's an extra fee on, on the plane just for my bag because I need them. I need those options. That's what's up. And what's your uh, favorite clothing brands? My favorite clothing brand is yours for sure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <That's love>. My <laughs> guy. Yeah, uh, my boy. You know my boy. Um. Um. Aaron Bell, Bentley Bell, he's he's out in uh, L.A. right now. He got a clothing line he's starting up to. It's, it's called um, Gold Day Alfonso, and I, I'm I'm really I really like that too. For me, I mean, like for me, it's not clothes. It's clothes to me nowadays. It's like as long as it as long as it don't say like a uh, K Swish or something on the front. You know what I mean? I'm cool with it. You know, as long as the the material is good. I'm uh, you know what I mean I usually just put things together. So gotcha. I don't really have other than y'all two clothing lines. I don't really have no nobody that I'm. Alright, so look, so look guys, we're gonna wrap this up, man. Vidal Hazelton, Staten Island's own. Y'all better stand mm -hmm. the fuck up. Excuse my mouth. I'm not <laughs> apologizing again. Staten Island's in the building. Shout out to you, bro. We appreciate you. Shout out to yeah, my man Johnny sure. Andrews for allowing us to be in this space. We appreciate yeah. you, good brother. Yeah, we see you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my Schlady, my boy Tim. We appreciate you. Welcome to the team, good brother. I am your host, Josh Moody. I'm your other host, Evan Odeshie. I'm Vidal Hazelton, and thanks for having me, y'all, for real. All right, your fellas, we'll holler at you. Peace. <laughs>